Hello and welcome to Learning Economics. In this class, we shall introduce ourselves with experimental economics. Precisely, we shall discuss what experiments bring to economics. Students, traditionally, the economists were of the view that unlike pure sciences, economic theories cannot be tested in controlled environment. Therefore, like astronomers, economists can only rely on observations. As these thoughts are reflected by the words of Simelson and Nordos. However, thanks to Daniel Kemet and Warren Simmel, who brought in experiments into economics and won Nobel Prize in 2002. Kemen is considered as the father of behavioral economics, whereas Warren Smith is called as the father of experimental economics. Nowadays, economists use experiments to study how human beings make decisions in a variety of economic interactions, especially those requiring strategic thinking. Given that we wish to study the process of human interactions, the research agenda is broadly overlapped with those of both cognitive and social psychologist theories. Experiments help us study this kind of issues. However, this does not mean that this tool, that is experiments, are superior to traditionally used tools in economics. In fact, in many instances, researchers use a mix of the two, which is both possible and desired. Both the field and laboratory produce both kinds of data, we call as happenstance data and experimental data. For example, if we want to know, for example, the GDP, inflation rate, or unemployment rate, these numbers will be based upon happens data collected from the field. However, if we want to see how a specific kind of incentive structure changes the worker's behavior, we have to take experimental data. Same is the case with the lab. Although experiments in economics came from experiments in psychology, However, there are certain notable differences between the experiments in economics and experiments in psychology. For example, the role of theory. In economics, theory leads the experiments. Therefore, experiments are theory-based. However, in psychology, the facts and figures, that is the data are respected more. Then the institutions. Economists give importance to the rules of the game, that is, to the institutions. And they believe that the decisions are strongly influenced by institutional setup. However, psychologists often prefer to study behavior in the absence of such institution constraints. Next difference is of motivation and incentives. Economists are of the view that human decisions are strongly linked to monetary loss or gain they face because of their choices. Therefore, they take great pain to establish a clear incentive structure in laboratory or in field where the payments to the participants is directly related to the decisions they make. Whereas in psychology, intrinsic motivation is more important. Psychologists are less concerned with providing incentives to their participants, especially monetary incentives, and often do not feel the need for any such reward. And even some psychologists strongly oppose the introducing monetary incentives. Next is deception. Economists believe that participants who have been deceived in one experiment might be much less inclined to take the instructions at their face value in the next one. However, the psychologists take a more casual view of deception. They think that deception does not make a difference in the behavior and extensive debriefing at the end of the session will take care of mistaken impressions and assumptions on the part of participants.
Next is what experiments bring to economics? Students, in general, economists are mainly in interested in aggregate outcomes of interactive games. And in the way they neglect so many factors which they think are either insignificant or hard to quantify. Experiments are an excellent tool for studying the neglected forces, for example, the motivation, social interaction, bandwagon effect, etc. And they study how these neglected forces play out at aggregate level. Experiments also help us gauging the effectiveness of certain interventions. This helps us identify the challenges and compare the cost and benefit of the intervention in short and long run without wasting huge resources. Banerjee and Deflo's work is a good example of this. And most importantly, experiments help us understand how humans behave, not how econs behave. There are some specific characteristics of economic experiments. Number one, they are performed in controlled economic environment. By economic environment, we mean the agents, the institutional setup, the information that they have and how it is being exchanged within them. And through this, we can avoid correlation versus causation issue. Second, economists always place values on participants' action. The identity of subjects that participate in experiments is always kept secret so that they can make choices independently and thus their choices reflect how women make decisions. Similarly, to get reliable results, economists do not deceive the subjects. And lastly, that the experiments can be repeated in similar or different conditions. So the reliability of their results is quite high. Now let's talk about the components of an experiment. First is the environment, which means individuals' preferences, the technologies, initial endowment, etc. These are implemented by appropriate monetary incentives. Next is institution, which means the rules of the game. This includes what actions are feasible, what will be the sequence of actions that agents can perform, what are the information conditions, how much information is being shared and how. And lab experiments often define a game. It's interesting to note that game theory and experimental economics are strongly related and affect each other. And then is the framing of instruction. That is how the instructions are ordered and how they are passed on to the subjects. It also includes actions and choice of words while giving instructions. Now let's study what purpose experiments serve in economics. These can be listed as Now let's study some of these one by one. First is testing a theory. We can use experiments to test a theory or to discriminate between theories. The economic theories provide, provide the, basics, the basis of experimental design. Design, we can design proper control treat proper controls and treatments that allow casual inferences about why the certain treatment worked or not worked. Then we compare our predictions about the outcome with experimental outcome. After analyzing experimental outcomes, we explain the causes of a theory's failure or stress test its success. In case the theory fails sometimes and succeeds other times, 
economists must find out when the theory fails and under what condition it succeeds. Next is establish empirical regularities as the basis of new theory. If we repeat experiments and each time we get similar kind of outcomes, then these well established empirical regularities direct theories, theorists efforts. That is, we can say that as theory is used to update empirics, similarly empirical findings are also used to update theories. And in presence of multiple equilibria, which is common in repeated games, experiments may help to select relevant ones. Experiments also allow us to go beyond the present state of art in the theory. Next purpose that experiments serve in economics is testing institutions and environments. To learn about efficiency properties of institutes, for example, Chamberlain performed an experiment in class to study the claims of perfectly competitive market structure. To learn how different set of rules of the game result in different outcomes. That is how we can check what kind of institutions will be more suitable. And next, to learn how some kind of institutions result in different outcomes in different environments. Next is understanding how much value people place on different preferences. For example, these days, the news of three missing mountainers who were trying to submit K2 in winters without oxygen is quite hot. The rescue operation using satellite support and helis is being carried out. However, the question is how long this operation should be carried? Or in other words, what should be the maximum limit of expenditures on such operations? This is more important as we are in resource constraint world. So spending more on the rescue or search operation may result in ending up with less resources for hospitals across the country. Therefore, we should try to understand the preference of each of such actions and how, and somehow try to understand the value of each. This is where experiment Experimental economics helps us. And lastly, in case of wind tunnel experiments. The great thing about economic theory is that one can examine what would happen if one changed policies or implemented new institutions. For example, does the elimination of trade restrictions increase aggregate welfare? or like, how should the parking slots be allocated to maximize the usage? The great thing about economic experiments is that they allow us to examine these questions empirically. That is all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we shall discuss something about laboratory experiments, field experiments, and lab in field experiments. Thank you and goodbye.